space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds, to discover new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Though the Enterprise's primary mission is peaceful exploration, the galaxy holds many surprises. To be prepared, we are conducting a mock battle with the USS Republic. Captain Patterson reports the Republic is in position and ready to begin, Captain. The Republic is arming weapons and raising shields. I suggest we do the same, Captain. Raising shields. Arming weapons. All right. It's arming weapons. Oops. Arming weapons. Welcome to this new series where I play through Star Trek the 25th anniversary and we are jumping right into it. Target analysis on. And you can see I'm giving them quite the pummeling. Um, I'm gonna destroy this guy in this mock battle and then uh, talk some more afterwards. Is crippled, Captain. Captain Patterson extends his congratulations, sir. Lowering shields and disarming weapons. Message coming in from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. Jim, the Enterprise is ordered to travel to Pollux 5. The natives report that alien life forms have been attacking the settlers near a mine at Mount Idol. You are to report to the High Prelate of the colony. The settlers are members of the Acolytes of the Star Set. The description of the attackers vary, but all say that the attackers resemble creatures from many Earth religions known as demons. Starfleet wants you to determine the nature of these creatures and to resolve the situation without bringing harm to the colonists. Starfleet out. All right, so we have our mission. So what we have here is we're on the bridge, and this is where a lot of stuff is done. We have, let's see, we have Sulu here. And he can bring us into orbit or raise our shields. We have Chekhov, who... That's arm weapons or take us into warp using the nav navigational chart, which is what we're going to do to get to where we're headed. But first, I want to go to the, through everyone else. For here is Mr. Scott, who is on the bridge for some reason and not in the engine room. But here, um, this is where you can repair damaged systems. Or right here, turn on emergency power. This is Uhura. Send communications if we're able to. At this moment, there's no one here, so she will just... Orders are to proceed to the Pollux system. She'll just tell us what our last orders were. This is Mr. Spock. We can just have him talk and share insight, or use the ship's computer. I advise referring to the star map and setting a course for the Pollux system, sir. All right, so that will be here with Chekhov, and there are keyboard shortcuts to do all of this stuff. So here we go. Now, this is an old DOS game, so this is where a lot of the, um, how would you put it? 
kind of their cop. This was their copyright protection, if you will. So you'd have to go to the manual and look this stuff up. So, because I got this off of Steam, I have. Here we go. An image that I reference. All right, so we need to go to Pollux. Well, let's see. Pollux, Pollux, Pollux. That is right here. That's the Pollux system. So, away we go. We have arrived at Pollux 5. Thank you, Mr. Spock. All right, I'm going to slow us down and reference the computer. Pollux. Pollux 5 system. An inhabited satellite of Pollux B. Pollux 5 has lately emerged from an ice age caused by large meteor strikes. It has recently been colonized by the acolytes of the star's religious sect. The planet is home to a wide variety of plant life, but insects and other lower life forms are the only known animals. All right. Well, I think that's all we can get or need at the moment. We are too far from the planet for a sensor probe, Captain. All right. Let's, uh... Um, was it Akura? Message from High Prelate Robert Angevin, sir. Here we go. Welcome, Enterprise. The High Prelate awaits you. Please, beam down and meet with him. Ooh, going in circles here. All right. And we can hit O for orbit. Or tell Sulu to take us into orbit here. Entering standard orbit. So now that we are here... And talk to Spock, I think, and he might scan for us if I'm not mistaken. Pollux 5 has recently emerged from an ice age, sir. It's spring at the moment. Cool, but tolerable. Sensors indicate previously documented flora and fauna. Nothing unusual. All right, then. The High Prelate is waiting for you to beam down, sir. Well, then let's beam down. Away we go. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott? You have the car. All right, and here we are. This is so much better, gentlefolk. We are honored at your presence and hope you will find peace here in our haven. All right, so as we're saying... Captain, the oh. floor on this planet is very interesting. <laughs> Everyone wants to I talk. I how useful it may be for medicinal purposes. Right, so as I was saying, there's kind of two parts to the game. There's the space combat, and then there's the kind of point-and-click adventure missions. All right, so here we are. Let's talk, each of us. This planet's as beautiful as everyone says it is. The trees, the fresh air, the freezing cold. Come on, Bones, the cold will improve your circulation. Some people get too much circulation. Captain, demons and supernatural creatures are almost by definition illogical. Yet it is evident these people believe what they have seen. Barring illness or mass hysteria, I agree that a real problem seems to exist. Doctor, you need to investigate the possibility of disease, mental or physical, among these people before we go chasing up the mountains. Prelate and Given, may we see those who have encountered the demons? They are already gathered in the chapel, and will cooperate in any way with you, first door on my right. All right, so we just got some information by talking among ourselves. Uh, let's talk to this guy. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. We have received word that alien life forms are creating problems at your mining facilities at Idle Mountain. Tell me more. So here we have a bunch of different choices we can go through to make. Most high prelate and given, I am honored to meet you. I consider it my divine duty to assist you in any possible way with the spawn of the devil. No. Been seeing ghosts and boogeymen, eh? I find that a little hard to believe. So, the first choice is probably the most diplomatic. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the U.S. So that's what we're going to pick. We have received word 
that alien life forms are creating problems at your mining facilities at Idle Mountain. Tell me more. Certainly, Captain Kirk. Not aliens per se. We have encountered what we believe are demons at Idle Mountain. Creatures surely emerging from the very gates of hell. Our god would not test us thus without reason. So we believe your might and insight are our god's method to help us discover what is going on. Aside from seeing demons, has any hard data been collected? Any evidence I could see? Demons, gates of hell, this is the 23rd century. Hmm. Aside from seeing demons, has any hard data been collected? Any evidence I could see? A skeptic would consider everything merely anecdotal or unproven. My people will gladly tell you their own stories, so you need not hear it secondhand through me. What can you tell me about the mine itself? You're wasting the time of a starship capable of destroying this planet with campfire stories? No wonder you were dumped out here in the middle of nowhere. Definitely not choosing that one. What can you tell me about the mine itself? The area is exceptionally stable tectonically, and easy for our machinery to work in, praise God. We've mined for hafnium and a variety of useful trace elements. The deeper we dig, however, the more anomalous the variety of minerals seems to be. Our Ignatiate brother Stephen has his own theories about why this might be. Either way, the anomalies inspired Brother Candray to conduct studies inside the mine. Yesterday, he reported discovering a strange door. A gate to hell, surely, for the demons caused a cave-in immediately. Candray was trapped, unconscious, and the demons prevent us from rescuing him. We can only hope he is still alive. Thank you for your courtesy, Kirk. May you receive the guidance and protection of our God as you complete this divine mission. All right, then. You look rather cold, Bones. I'm not cold. I'm freezing. And that damn transporter just had to set me down in the middle of a snowdrift. A centimeter of snow does not technically constitute a drift, Doctor. And doctors say that patients complain too much. Oh, yes. We have our security, Ensign. I've never seen snow like this before. This is great. You mean you've never built a snowman, Ensign? I've never even thrown a snowball. Do you think anyone would mind? Well... Later, Ensign, we have work to do. Of course, sir. Alright. So let's, uh, head in here. Alright, so this is the guy that was, excuse me, injured. Jim, this man has suffered severe physical injuries to his head and arm. The wounds have been adequately cared for. However, he has developed a Nugarian infection. If not treated swiftly, the effects can be fatal. The infection can normally be treated with hypoditoxin, but there's none on the Enterprise. I may be of some assistance. The Lorexian berry grows near the mouth of the cave. If I could acquire it, I would be able to synthesize the hypoditoxin from the berry. Unfortunately, the demons prevent us from approaching the cave entrance. Perhaps you could retrieve it for me. All right, so we got ourselves a little side quest to get information from him. Uh, let's talk, among others. Time is of the essence. You must hurry and retrieve the berry. All right, so they want us to do that now. This man needs help, Jim, and I wouldn't want to put it off for too long. All right. This man needs help, Jim. We're going to do that now, then. We can look around. On the other side of the trees is Idle Mountain, a tall, forbidding place. You have a vague feeling of danger. Okay. So off, up we go. Okay, so right here there are Klingons, so we want to go and pull out a phaser and shoot each of them. You see a small explosion, and the Klingon's hand falls to the ground with a dull thud. I guess they don't make Klingons like they used to, sir. Captain, I detect a recent avalanche approximately 6.2 kilometers away that occurred within the last three days. The mountain may be quite dangerous. Demons, Klingons, avalanches. What's next? The wicked witch of the West? That is not logical, Doctor. It wasn't supposed to be logical, you green-blooded falcon. Why does everything have to be so damn logical? 
Oh, let's go pick this up. You take the Klingon's detached hand. Captain, we registered phaser fire and an unknown energy beam. Is everyone okay? We're fine. Did you register any disruptor fire? No, Captain. Why? Are there Klingons down there? No, just an idea, Kirk out. Fascinating. I begin to suspect that we have stumbled upon something that the colonists would never have uncovered. What is it, Spot? I wish to gather further data before making a definite conclusion, Captain. They look like Klingons. This is not a Klingon, Captain. Not a real one. It is an organic construct, an android-like robot. It looks like a Klingon, but the appearance is entirely superficial. All right. Well, let's hurry up and get those berries before wasting too much time. Here we go. So send... Oh, that's Spock. These seem to be Laraxian berries, Captain. They have several medicinal uses, but Dr. McCoy would know more. Pick the wrong guy. Jim, these are the berries we need to synthesize the hypodetoxin. We must get these to Brother Stephen quickly. You have retrieved a sample of berries. You fail to obtain any... Oops. Keep forgetting to change out of my tool. All right, let's head back quickly then. Good. Brother you have found the berries. Uh, bring them to my lab quickly. Where's that at? Oh, I see you found the berries. Meet me in my lab. Okay. I'm going to assume it's this next one over. Convenient. Welcome to my study. Feel free to look around. My medical and scientific equipment is surely not so sophisticated as you're accustomed to, but if there's anything you wish to use, please feel free. Also, I would be interested in anything you might have to show me. Oops. <laughs> not what I wanted to do. The settings on the Ardak 4 have already been adjusted. Now simply place the berry in the machine and the hypoditoxin will be synthesized. An old-fashioned computer. It appears to have some type of simulation running. An antiquated molecular synthesizer sits in the corner. An antiquated molecular synthesizer. That's what we want. The machine synthesizes a quantity of hypoditoxin. We've got to get this to Brother Chubb as quickly as possible, Jim. And away we go. Oh, we have medicine now. Thank you. You're most kind. All right, will he talk now? I headed up the party that sought to rescue Brother Candry. Without warning, the demons appeared and attacked us as we approached the mine. Can you tell us what they looked like? Like the demons that have plagued devout folk since before our people left the Earth. Huge, muscular demons with ruddy skin. Truly the manifestation of evil. With bat wings, horns and talons, and a pointed tail. God preserve us all. One tore open my arm and I surely would have perished, but for my companions who bore me back down the mountain. The demons didn't follow you? No. I am Brother Grisnash. I went up the mountainside in solitary prayer seeking to fix my fears. Indeed, I found them. A bellowing Krognik demon with sharp teeth and a long snout descended upon me in a rush of wind. Captain, a Krognik demon has a decidedly wolfish appearance. Brother Grisnash, is this not the traditional shape of the Evil One and his minions among Tellarites? It is. I believe this may be significant, Captain. Brother Candre was, or is, my partner. 
I was on the communications link when the demons caused the rockfall and silenced him. He said he'd found a strange door with devilish writing. Truly, he came upon the gate of hell itself. I am Brother Stephen, an Ignatiate following the holy teachings with mind and soul alike. I believe the anomalous mineral readings in combination with evidence of ancient disturbances in this otherwise highly stable geologic location indicates previous habitation of the region eons ago. Why, Spock, you two should get along fine. He sounds just like you. I would be equally honored to discuss medicine with you, Doctor, as science with your Vulcan associate. Let me continue. I believe our god made humans, aliens, and demons all. If I could get a real demon into my study, I would bless our god for the opportunity, as I thank him for everything in this life. You tread close to unholy knowledge, Brother Stephen. I appreciate your prayers, Brother Roberts. Captain, if you and your people go up the mountain, I hope afterward you will visit me in my study, which is next door. I'm too old to make the trek myself, but I'm eager for knowledge. In return, I will offer you what insights our God grants these old eyes. The medical methods of these people seem primitive to me, Doctor. By our standards, yes. Here the acolytes prefer a simpler lifestyle. Unfortunately, this is one of the consequences. Well, all right. Guess let's check out the mountain some more. The answer to this mystery lies ahead of us, gentlemen. Whoever was trying to stop us may not stop with those Klingons, Captain. I recommend extreme caution. The thought had occurred to me, Mr. Spock, but thank you for mentioning it. Hmm. Does your tricorder say the cave is warmer, Spock? It is not logical for me to use my tricorder to determine the cave's temperature, Doctor. I do not see what purpose it would serve. Spock, everybody talks about the weather. I'm sorry I let you down with those Klingons back there. I should have been paying more attention. Just don't make that mistake again, Ensign. Those Klingons give me the willies. They always have. My sister was wounded by them in the Chozon ambush. We've all had our share of conflict with the Klingons, Ensign. The Organians told me that one day, humans and Klingons will become good friends. I wonder if I'll ever live to see that day. <laughs> Indeed. All right, let's head in. Hmm. A gateway to an alien race. The wonders of the galaxy are endless, aren't they, Mr. Spock? Indeed, Captain. They can also be damn cold. All right, let's... Captain, there are several weak points in the cave-in's structure. Careful use of our phasers from the top down should be able to clear it. Oh, right, the hand. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Okay. Assume firing positions. Jim, the next time you need medical help on a snowball... Bones. I'll probably end up coming along. All right. Let's uh, put the doctor on this guy. It was a near thing, but he'll live. Oh, thank you kind souls for saving my life. Let me rest here for a little before returning to report this miracle to Prelate Angivin. A gateway to an alien race. Indeed, Captain. They can also be... I recommend as thorough an analysis of this area as possible. Fascinating, Captain. 
This door is made of an unknown material. It is clearly built by an alien race we have no knowledge of. Interesting. CA. It appears to be a security lock designed to open the door when the correct handprint is registered. We happen to have a severed hand here. The fit is perfect, but something seems to be shorting out. Hmm. Can we... No. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Um. I fail to see the logic in that action, Captain. Hmm. There is nothing at the moment. Shorting nothing out. happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing Oops. happens. <laughs> nothing happens. Okay. So we need to go and... Come on. There we go. Do something. scientist guy here might know something about it. What a fascinating piece of equipment. Highly advanced technology. You see here, it seems to have been damaged, however. Take it to my workbench and let's see if it can be repaired. I fear my hands are too shaky to perform such fine work, but perhaps one of you can do it. Mr. Spock, see what you can do about that hand. This machinery is delicate, but I have managed to repair the circuitry. See how the fingertips have micro-sized sensors? I wonder what use they may have. Hmm. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. All right. Well, let's look at this. Captain, this appears to be a model of the Earth. Notice how it models the proper situation for a total eclipse. Do I look like a pointy-eared, green-blooded, hmm. know-it-all alien? I certainly see nothing there calling for a ship's doctor. I certainly see nothing there calling for a ship's doctor. All right. Let us continue. Well, our friend is gone. The hand circuitry triggers a connection and the door opens. A long tunnel descends into the mountain. Jim, the next time you need oh, dear. I'll probably end up coming along. I already heard that. I failed to see the lot. Tell me about it. Nothing to report, Captain. Just a hallway. Got it. All right, let's go in it. See what happens to us. Logically, the machinery is sustaining some type of life in suspended animation. If we can reactivate the machines, then we may be able to meet its creators. Hmm. I'm just a security officer, sir. I wonder who or what constructed all this. I think we found the answer to our mystery.
This alien construction takes readings of mental activity. It also activates manufacturing equipment related to security and includes a short distance transportation device. Okay, so that's how they're making the fake the fake Klingons and fake monsters then. It is an alien life support system, Captain, utilizing geothermal energy. It is still functioning, waiting for some sort of signal. Fascinating, Captain. It is a diagram of a lunar eclipse of this planet. See how the red sphere of the moon is casting a shadow on the blue sphere, Pollux 5. This must be a very old piece of work, because this planet's moon was destroyed thousands of years ago. The machinery is waiting for the gravitational pull of another eclipse to activate it. An eclipse that will never come. And one other thing, Captain. This may also be a diagram showing the proper settings on that control panel. Okay. Sure. I guess. I don't know what I'm really supposed to do here. Welcome to our home. Thank you for repairing our somnambutron. Stop. You're trespassing on Federation territory. Well, we're not going to do that. And I also, I love the, the doom door sound for that coming out. Classic sound effects. I welcome you on behalf of the United Federation of Planets. Who are you? Where you come from? That sounds better. We did fix your machine. Can we write the repair bill off against rent on this land? Uh, not doing that one. I welcome you on behalf of the United Federation of Planets. Who are you? Where you come from? We call ourselves Nauians. Thousands of years ago, we saw that meteor impacts were going to cause an ice age. We created this huge underground shelter to preserve our race, keeping us in suspended animation until the planet had recovered. We programmed the machinery to revive us at the next eclipse, but we did not count on the destruction of our moon. Some advanced civilization. Perhaps you can tell us about the demons. Some advanced civilization. Yeah, Perhaps you can probably. tell us about the demons. About the demons. The demons, as you call them, are created by a machine designed to keep intruders away from our sleep chambers. It pulls from the minds of any approaching creature their most feared enemy and produces replicas to scare them away. For you and your crew, it was Klingons. For the Tellerites, a wolf demon. And for the other humans, a demon from their religion. On behalf of my people, thank you for waking us. I will turn off the machinery which creates our guardians, so that they no longer bedevil those with whom we now share our home. Oh, woe! Alas! The key is missing. I can do nothing. Even we will suffer the attacks of our own guardians unless the key can be found. I implore you, if you can help, please do so. Okay. I think we found the answer to our mystery. Have you found the key? All right, going on a item hunt then. Come on, let's leave. How do we leave? I guess that's how. Okay. Anything new? Whoever was trying to stop us may not oh. stop. thought had occurred to me was just... Already figured it out. Um... They look like Klingons. Nothing new. Um, let's talk to... This guy. 
I never dreamed that Starfleet would be interested in my discoveries, Captain. But our god often surprises us. Can I do anything with any of these? Mr. Spock, see what you can dig up from that old-fashioned computer terminal. Oh, uh, we've already done this. Captain, this appears to be Oops. a model of the Earth. Notice how it models a proper situation for a total eclipse. There is nothing at the moment for me to do there. There is nothing at the moment for me to do there. You are interested in my little museum of curiosities? Looks like a pile of junk if you ask me. Yes, tell us about these things. Where did you find all this? Looks like a pile of junk if you ask Where did you find all Yes, tell us about these things. I enjoy talking about these treasures. Shall I go into mineral specimens? Meteorite. Fossil shells. Skull of a small alien animal. Twist of metal. Or would you rather move on to something else? Mineral specimens. True curiosities, nothing more. I think they're very pretty, don't you? Shall I go into mineral mm. specimen? Meteorite. I believe this is evidence of the cataclysm which destroyed the moon of Pollux 5 eons past. I've constructed a theoretical model based on analysis of the planet's rings of what things might have been like. I think that the moon, like Earth's moon, would have made a total eclipse of the sun possible. I would have liked to have seen that. For conditions making a perfect total eclipse are rare in the universe. Our god creates great wonders. Shall I go into mineral specimen? fossil shells. One of the oldest forms I've seen on this planet. Our god makes beautiful things indeed. Shall I go into mineral specimen? Meteorite. Fossil shells. Skull of a small alien animal. Gotta be polite. The skull of a modern Silati, the largest creature native to this planet. Yeah, about the size of a house cat from Earth. The Silatis combine a rather insectoid pattern with four-legged reptilian form, including praying mantis-like forelimbs. Shall I go into... That middle seems an awful lot like meteor our alien now we skull of a small twist of metal. This chunk of rock is a greatly weathered example of a vanadium tungsten alloy, which doesn't occur naturally. It is my best evidence that the area was previously inhabited. Shall I go into minerals, or would you rather move on to something else? Very well. I can't imagine why, but if you have a further interest in any of this, take what you like. But please remember to return my treasures when you're done with them. You are interested in my... Oh. Looks like a pile of junk if you ask me. Yes, tell us about these things. I enjoy... Shall I go into... I Minerals, did the wrong would thing. would you rather move on to... Very well. Okay, that's what I want to do. Let's just go pick up everything and see what we can do. Pretty rock specimens. You look but see nothing of note. A common looking meteorite about the size of a fist. The brain case of a small creature looking slightly insectoid, somewhat reptilian. Fossil shells of aesthetic interest. Let's take the skull, the alien. That might be of interest to him. Jim, think about that skull we picked up from Brother Steve. I know. Now look at this alien. See the resemblance? That is exactly what I was thinking. child? No, I see many differences. This must be what our people who did not slumber have become. Still, I would like to see these remains properly interred according to the precepts of our religion. May I keep this? 
Of course, I think you will get along well with the Pollux inhabitants, and I'm sure you will have interesting theological discussions. I think I should return it to where I got it from. No, I want to keep it as a memento for myself. <laughs> yeah, the first one. Of course, I think you will get along well with the Pollux inhabitants, and I'm sure you will have interesting theological discussions. Well, yeah, let's show them other stuff. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. All right, well. You found the key. Well, that was easy. I can now turn off the machinery creating our guardians, and no more sentience shall be at risk. Surely the Holy One smiles upon us all. I have no way to thank you, Captain. But please carry this request from my people to yours. We have much ancient knowledge we can share, and we would like to join your Federation. Go in peace. I will be glad to accept your application to the Federation. We shall have a diplomatic envoy sent to make the final arrangements. We look forward to meeting them. We also look forward to having discourse with the colonists. Farewell. May the Holy One bless you. Live long and prosper. Kirk to Enterprise. Beam us up, Mr. Scott. All right. Well, that's one successful mission down. Message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the problems at Pollux 5 and evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. All right. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. Thank you for watching. I might have known there weren't any demons. We all have demons of our own bones. The ones we can't confront are often the hardest to deal with. These demons were based on fear, Captain. A human failing. I don't know, Spock. Everything that I've ever read about demons describes them as having 20 ears. All right, we'll see you next week with another episode of Star Trek. 